companies rolled out different models at different price brackets to meet the needs of the Indian consumer. Their latest offering is the Splash, launched globally, and that was meant to replace the Wagon R, but in India, no Maruti model actually goes out of production, so the Ritz, which is what it's known as in India, will share space with the Wagon R, just like the A-Star continues to share space with the Also. But Bert finds out if the Ritz actually has something more than what Maruti consumers are already used to. At around 2 lakh rupees, you could buy the Maruti 800. At about 2.5, there's the Alto. At about 3 lakh rupees, you could buy the Wagon R. 3.5, there's the Zen Estelo. At 4 lakh rupees, there's the A Star. And then at 5 lakh rupees, you could buy the Maruti Suzuki Swift. So then, where does this, the all new Ritz, fit in? Well, let me tell you something interesting. Even though Maruti have priced the Ritz between 4 to 5 lakh rupees, it is an introductory price. In a few months, that could increase and perhaps be even more expensive than the Swift. But let me tell you just why that could be. The Ritz is stylish and articulate, though not handsome, as much as cute and cuddly. It's based on the same platform as the Swift. Yet, visually, this car looks very different from the Swift. The design has no sporty aspirations and from the outset, the Ritz looks far more practical and urban. Visually, it may not look larger, but it is. However, I do feel that the flat surface hatch will reduce the efficiency of the boot space. Here's another reason why I said the Ritz may be priced higher than the Swift. For one, it's taller, but it's also longer than the Swift. So essentially, what you get is more headroom, you also get more knee room. And then the interiors of the Ritz also feel a bit more luxurious than the Swift. What I really like about Maruti is that despite all their cars being priced so closely, no two cars feature the same kind of interiors. They're all very different yet very unique and individual. They may share several components, for instance the steering wheel which you'd also see on the Swift and the SX4 but then everything else is very different. I love this pseudo carbon finish kind of plastic. Maybe plastic, yes, but it looks very nice and it all fits in very well. I love the center console and the gear shift placed on the center console. But the one thing that I really, really admire in this car is that Maruti has decided to put the tachometer on the dashboard because that's where I look when I'm shifting gears and not at the speedometer. Even though that's a very nice looking unit. The engine feels peppy and rev happy. Throttle responses are sharp. Right from the time you step on the pedal, there is enough torque generated to zip ahead at traffic lights or cruise comfortably in the city in higher gears and at low RPM. However, Maruti Suzuki have not gone in for the tried and tested 4-cylinder Swift engine. Instead, the Ritz has a lower capacity 4-cylinder engine that surprisingly is just as powerful as the Swift. Under the hood is an all-new K12M designated engine. It displaces about 1.2 litres and is good for about 80 PS of max power and 130 newton metres of max torque. Now that may not sound like much, but trust me, for a hatchback like this, it's really good. If you're the kind that drives to work in rush hour traffic every day, it's an engine that needs to be worked on really hard, but once it gets into the power band, it goes and just keeps going. It's got a fantastic gearbox as well, five speeds, and it really shifts nicely, precisely. Now, despite being a lot of fun to drive, the Ritz is nowhere close to the Swift where handling is concerned. It has the same underpinnings as the Swift, yet is not the sharpest in the Maruti stable. Blame it on the higher centre of gravity and the narrow and small 14-inch wheels which are more in tune to enhance fuel efficiency rather than dynamic ability. The suspension of the Ritz was specially tuned for India. So the ride quality is very comfortable and handling is also very good. It tracks a straight line, there are no theatrics, no fuss that it makes and it feels very confident and assured. The Ritz scores highly because it presents a lot more value than the Swift. The utilitarian benefits are immense and small families will love this car. It's not going to be the enthusiast choice but offers adequate safety, well-behaved manners and frugality in a stylish and fresh package which is just what middle-income households are looking for. Well, I'm quite impressed with the Ritz, but here's what I think Maruti's game plan should be. 
they should introduce the Swift Sport that will elevate the Swift to another plane entirely and then the Ritz can take over the Swift's position principally because it's a nice car to drive but it has a lot more utilitarian value than the Swift and for that alone I think she will sell very well at the box office.